Hi, <laughs> you're watching a new season of Green New Perspective Launchpad, which is a webcast series where we're going to talk about sustainability in various industries. Um, we're starting this season with the topic of sustainable fashion and design, because unfortunately the fashion industry is one of the most polluting industries in the world. So my guest today, I'm going to have two guests, but the first one I'm going to introduce is Miss Ivana Biucin. I'm going to read the introduction here, because I, I don't know this all by heart. Uh, Ivana Biucin is a master of textile technology and engineering the author of two books. The first one is called Modus Vivendi, Essay on Political, Economic and Social in Fashion, and the second one is called The Tyranny of Fashion, Using a Dormant in Search of Identity. Um, I read them both. They're both really great. If you want to, you know, get your introduction to sustainability in fashion, um, I think that you can order them via book depository, so check that out. Um, Ivana is also the head of the recently launched Institute of Sustainable Fashion, a project which is focused on local production of sustainable clothes, on education and spreading the idea of sustainable fashion. And my second guest is Miss Maria Kulusic, a costume and slow fashion designer. So we're going to learn more about slow fashion, which is an opposite of fast fashion system which operates globally. My name is Dunya, <laughs> I'll be your host, and I hope we all have some fun during this 30 minutes long uh, interview. Um, if you do have fun, please do hit that subscribe button, and we also want to hear your feedback, so please tell us in the comments below what you liked, what you disliked, so we can improve our content in the future. Um, that's it from me for this short <laughs> introduction, so um, wait for a bit till my guests arrive. So, hi, Maria and Ivana, how are you? <laughs> hi, hello. Very well, you? Um, I wanted to start with the questions, like, immediately, <laughs> because we don't have much time, so let's use it wisely. Um, first question will be, will be I, I already introduced you briefly, but I would like you to introduce your, yourself, but not like, you know, like, give me your autobiography. I wanted of you to, to um, tell me how did you stepped into this world of sustainable fashion and what did you found out about about the industry that motivated you to um let's say change it as much as you could via being a sustain sustainable designer or, or sustainable educator like Ivana um, maybe Ivana could answer first because um she wrote a book and then she she um let's say founded this project um where she's doing education as well so maybe that would be a good start and then maria can tell us um how she you know uh, started to do um sustainable design so even can you start and then maria you can just continue okay Okay, so, well, I know that people like a good story and would like to have this like eureka moment in my life that happened, but unfortunately that wasn't the case because I was born with it and I was born into it. So I was born in a small town, uh, in a working class family with, with single, uh, single parents, single mother, and I was connected with nature, but also I saw that the balance was off, the balance of the system, the balance of life. And also part of my family was into uh, environmental work and was into uh, this whole green uh, green uh, economy. So I knew the pro problems from the first moment I, I knew about the world and the system and everything. I knew that it was out of balance. I knew about all the problems that were happening from the 80s. So as a child, I wore, you know, save the world, save the planet t-shirts, and it was always a part of me. So, but then, of course, as you go into adulthood and, 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 and if it, when you go into college, uh, I started to grasp the whole picture. You know, I started to uh, think about, okay, what was happening in Croatia, what was happening in Yugoslavia, in our textile industry. And that's when the whole picture started to come into the whole. Uh, so that's when I started to go into sustainability. I, of course, then it wasn't called sustainability. It was called environmentalism or activism. Uh, but that was, so as long as I know, I was always, uh, I was always questioning the system. I always knew, felt, and I always saw 
that it was out of balance. And then when you go into research, you see it deep in the data, it's all clear. But um, how did the system look in the 80s and how does it look now? I mean, it's much worse now than it was in the 80s. So actually you saw the fall of the system, actually the speeding up of the system. Well, uh, um, well, it's a very complex uh, question with a very complex answer because I don't think that things are worse now because uh, there is this illusion that in the 60s, 70s and 80s, we were living like this utopian paradise of golden age of textile industry. But the problems were uh, obvious then and the problems were that we didn't have any raw production, production of raw materials. We were back then, even then we were uh, the dependent op upon import of raw materials. But there was a golden era uh, that was in 1920s and 1930s. Most people don't know about this era when we were like, of course, we we're a closed society, but we, we produced like 96% of raw materials for our own use. So we were, the, we were sustainable then. And well, we you're were talking the about because, Croatian market. You're talking uh, about talking Croatian about, market. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about uh, Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. but also Croatia, but it was like this bigger, bigger uh, market. And we were the third biggest uh, uh, producer of hemp in the world back then. So at one point we did have like this sustainability and then it all collapsed. And now we are, I don't know, at the beginning, at the end, we are somewhere in the middle. So a lot of things have changed. But I think that we need to look in our, in our past and see it was, it was once possible, so it can, it can be possible again. But what do you think globally? Globally, well, uh, you think about the change in sustainability. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, when you go onto this sustainable path, sustainable journey, I think it, it is it is quite challenging and it's quite challenging because you have to hold this image in your head and it's an image that things are much worse and things are much better. So at the moment we have like, we have ultra fast fashion, shame, but we also have sustainability. We also have sustainability being pushed as a marketing tool. We also have a lot of greenwashing, but we also have like this, growing communities, growing individuals, growing movements that are pushing towards change, that are rebuilding, that are reshaping the story. So it's happening all at once, worse, better. And you have to decide uh, in which tribe, in which path you want to go. Maria, what do you have to say? Well, from my angle, uh, my story was uh, kind of a classical fashion sto story. I uh, uh, gained an opportunity to to show my uh, work uh, through one of um, Croatian Fashion uh, Week. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was something uh, that needed to happen for me to see uh, that's the thing I don't want to do. Uh, I experienced it. Uh, I was uh, having like maybe two or three shows, two or three seasons. And then I realized uh, this is not working for me. I need uh, a slower pace. I realized that I can't do, do it uh, that fast. I don't have time for for designs for the whole process. So then I decided to go my way and to do in my own pace. Uh, and that was in the 2016. And from then I started to to uh, have my uh, my own options. Uh, I I wasn't actually. Uh, at the moment, uh, kind of uh, sustainable completely, but I realized I didn't like what was happening around me. So I, uh, I kind of uh, started to do what, whatever I could to do with uh, everything that surrounded me. Uh, that was my first time I used, uh, started using dead stock fabrics. I started using natural dyes uh, and started printing my own fabrics with uh, all the stuff that surrounded me. Uh, and it kind of pushed me towards uh, exploring more, towards uh, with each other collection. I wanted to do something more. I wanted to push myself more. And uh, uh, at this moment, I think I'm uh, still thriving. You know, I can't call myself uh, completely sustainable because no one is. But uh, it's kind of my my uh, process of 
pushing all the time. So it was, um, uh, for me, I needed to discover that kind of classic, classical fashion story to actually decide for myself uh, what I want to do. So yeah, I'm now in that path and uh, still, still uh, growing and uh, exploring more options for me. Um, Ivana said, like, the, the, the sustainability um, network in fashion is growing, but is it difficult to be a sustainable or thriving sustainable designer in an unsustainable system? Uh, how difficult it is for you to find the materials, to, to pay the workers, to pay yourself, to, to build a brand, to grow a brand? It's much, it's much more easier now than it was uh, back then, like in 2016. Uh, I actually uh, find myself uh, being lucky because I live in a kind of smaller city, smaller country. Uh, you have this community, you have this possibility to, uh, to uh, employ all these people around you and to work like in, in a small community. And that's, I think that's uh, something that's really good for a fashion brand to, to grow uh to you know to find uh, its path uh and at the same time uh it's not easy because you're uh kind of uh, fulfilled with all this uh, greenwashing these examples that are not that uh, ideal because uh, there's a lot of uh sustainability so-called sustainability but it's actually not, not what it it's called you know like in croatia we see a lot of brands uh, trying to be sustainable but it's actually not a real sustainability it's just a trend you know but uh, at the same time uh they have so much possibilities here they can use and reuse recycle as even is doing also you know you have so much options here uh, so I find myself really lucky to to be here, and uh, I think it's not that hard. It, it, it's a choice. It's a choice you have to make, and that's it. Stick to it. Yeah, you mentioned that Ivana is doing fabric recycling. So can you tell us more about that? You're making a. Uh, uh, I've mentioned your project, uh, Institute for Sustainable Fashion. Um, where you educate and advocate for production of slow fashion, and also, um, can you tell us so, uh, how do you how you recycle, how you manage to um, <clears throat> to lower the textile waste within your pro working process? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, Maria is uh, like a classical fashion designer, but my approach is maybe uh, a little bit different. I call my design peasant design because it's just <laughs> like, you know, for peasants, so simple. But my whole uh, goal is trying to, uh, I, I don't consider myself a fas fashion designer. I consider myself a storyteller and I'm trying to like reshape the story of sustainability because I think that's the biggest problem in sustainability now that it's being pushed in just the old way, the old system, in the straight line, thinking, creating, working. So I think right now, maybe it's just uh, dawned on me that I'm really focused on raw materials, as I said, because I know that they are, they are the biggest problem, like the, the beginning of the cycle and the end of the cycle, it's the most crucial part. So I'm trying to rethink uh, raw materials. I use, uh, as Maria also uses, like antique linens, old cotton. I try to reshape this story around uh, the old industry that we had and the, also the old textile industry, but also raw material industry that we had. And also I'm doing upcycling. And while I was thinking about it uh, today uh, at the beginning, uh, preparing for this conversation, I was thinking that, wow, my beginning uh, in sustainable fashion was in with upcycling. Of course, I didn't know it was upcycling then. It was in high school when I started sewing and when I was just going through my mother's closet and just taking her stuff without her knowing and just reshaping everything just trying to make something uh, unique and trying to repush this this story from monoculture when everybody was uh, looked the same into something uh, unique. 
So yeah, I'm trying to rethink every part of the cycle. I'm trying to tell this uh, new story. And also uh, my main uh, business is I produce uh, sustainable items, sustainable clothing. And that's my business model of finance, financing myself so the education part and everything can be uh, for free or at the lower price. So since you've seen this small but important steps in sustainable development of fashion industry, can you tell me um, um, how do you see that new de- new technologies are going to develop? How do you see that they're develop- developing at the moment? And what do you think about, well, we can mention some new economic models like big growth, because that subject is really popular in the let's say, sustainability circles here in America. We're talking about degrowth, but I don't see it happening. So I wanted to, to see, you know, what do you mean? Can you, Maria, can you, can you, can you tell me? Uh, degrowth is actually uh, something that uh, I, I am very fond of. Uh, it's a model, it's, it's actually not a new model. I think it's existing uh, from the 80s, maybe. Uh, uh, but being so, man, it's being mentioned, but existing, yeah. I don't think it exists at yeah, all. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, kind of a very very uh, similar to slow fashion for me. Uh, it has uh, uh, all uh, uh, other uh, kind of qualities that uh, that slow fashion is striving to. Uh, uh, to slower the production, to to make uh, better quality garments, uh, and to buy less, of course, to produce less. So that's something that I'm trying also as a fashion brand to produce less because I have uh, uh, like two collections per year, and that's my maximum. It's my choice to have it like that. And I think uh, for the the future, it's not about uh, technology. Uh, for for its growth, it's about it's more about taking a step back, and degrowth is actually that, like taking a step back uh, to see what's around you, to to include your uh, um, local uh, environment, to include the people that surround you, to employ them, to activate them, and first of all, uh, the main thing is to to learn uh, uh, to learn your customers more. You know, to to show them uh, what they have to to try to. You know, if uh, the customer is not uh, uh, looking for uh, sustainable fashion or for slow fashion, it doesn't make sense. It all starts with customer customers. So it's on our, on ourselves to to kind of teach them uh, to maybe embrace and uh, uh, degrowth, you know, a bit Ivana? more. Yeah. Ivana, what do you think? Uh, well, of course, I agree with everything that Maria said. And for me, as I said er- earlier, it's all about uh, reshaping the story, telling a new story, trying to think of new creative ways to educate people to involve them into reshaping the story to get together. Uh, Of course, uh, everything also in my storytelling is based around local. And also, as Maria said, I really don't think that we need some grand technologies and that is the way. Of course it is. But in a way it is, as she said, taking a step back, looking into our past, looking into our heritage, looking into our really rich heritage of industry, of agriculture, and driving inspiration and knowledge from our past into the present to reshape the future. Of course, we are using better technologies now. As I said, first thing I would like to see here is uh, like some, some raw materials, so maybe small revolution in agriculture, in textile uh, uh, agriculture. I really, I'm. That's my main goal now to like to try to push young people in that direction, to inspire them, to connect, of, of course, with uh, communities in Europe that are doing that, that are doing like some pigments, that are doing uh, natural textiles, <laughs> because it all starts from there. We are all in design, we are all in, you know, like this garments, but it starts at the beginning, it starts from the soil, it starts from nature, it starts from new story that has to evolve from us. Yeah, I have to say I'm I'm excited about biomaterials. I would like to see that happening more 
um, and there is some biomaterials development in the Balkans region. So that, that's really exciting. Um, well, thank you, girls. I hope it was fun for you. And I hope that our um, listeners, subscribers are going to, to uh, learn something from this conversation. Um, thank you again and see you again in the next few weeks with the new Green New Perspective Launchpad webcast. Bye, people. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.